All right, so <clears throat> at this point, we got the two wires. This is these are the power wires. This is uh, ultra long. This is basically the hour meter, and this is the uh, the light, which you can actually see down here. This thing is propped up on its side. So the first things first. Uh, what we're gonna do is. Um, we're going to connect to the barrel jack the switch and we're actually going to bypass the barrel jack altogether we're going to drill a new hole and put a brand new barrel jack here and this is going to get a plug um, so I'll show you that next We're using continuity tester. Test out. So this trace over here is the positive, and this one over here is the negative. Time to solder. So now it's the new barrel jack, same as the old one, 5.5 millimeters. The new one actually comes with a little bit of a lid uh, for waterproofing, which we don't need. That's probably going to go into the old jack there. It's going to seal it, cut the rest off. But this needs to go someplace where it doesn't interfere with the button, doesn't interfere with the SD card, and uh, it doesn't interfere with the um, uh, micro USB cable so I've decided approximately right about here in between all of these this will go and the aluminum is fairly thin and there's gonna be chips in there so we need to clean this out thoroughly but uh, that's the pilot hole So after installing this, you can actually hear the clock ticking and the light works. So this is not the end of the electrical modifications but the next modification is actually a plug and play. So this is what the underside of the printer looks like now, I've zip tied all the extra cables or as many of them as I could and um, I'm going to be installing a set of TL smoothers 
Uh, this printer is a firmware version 43 I believe that means that the this thing has a full 16th micro stepping not an eighth micro stepping like the old printers but I still find these this printer kind of noisy it's not the noisiest thing in the world but it's not quiet either I'm kind of used to having noisy deltas but I always thought about trying these they come with heat sinks and a cable and they're actually plug and play so part of the preparation what I did was I put double sided tape this is the 3M stuff it's high heat and the heat sinks come uh, not installed and they're always going to be a pain in the you know what to install so I'll install those onto these smoothers and then I'll install them inside while I do this I will also be rotating the axes forward uh, this printer has a um, design flaw from the factory where it actually prints anything that's you put facing forward in Cura or any sort of slicer it actually rotates at about 45 degrees so actually switching the wires around allows me to um, uh, make the printed devices face forward so first things first I'm going to take this axis out plug it into this smoother And these are supposedly the good smoothers, the ones that have eight chips in them. And of course the double sided tape. It's difficult to remove the protective layer. That's one. That's two. Uh, that sits there. Now I'm going to do all the rest of them, clean up the wiring, and show you a final result. So at this point, the smoothers are in, and um, the steppers and the end and stops are have been switched. Um, the auto leveling bed switches don't have to be switched at all. I, I actually I think they're actually hooked up in a series. So it doesn't really matter. So I think that's about it for the wiring. So let's power this thing up and see what it sounds like. Well, that looks and sounds pretty good. So now we have to deal with the extruder and the bed. So I've been buying these sheets of Carolite, I guess, build tech, whatever you want to call it. Um, been buying pretty large ones and cutting them up and using them on this printer and the other one as well. So they're basically a consumption item. Uh, and uh, I just generally peeled the thing off. I cleaned this up with the isopropyl alcohol and I slap in a new sheet and off I go. One of the things that I do want to upgrade to this bed is I'm gonna chamfer the edges because this thing is razor sharp and I'm gonna put some insulation here I'll show you that next so I guess it's filing time carefully Um. 
I'm not sure if this is gonna interfere with the actual end stops or the bed leveling stops so I'm gonna install this in like so and we're gonna test it out so it seems like the interference point is uh, the cork against the bottom of this heater the actual sides and the surface does not seem to interfere so what I did was I pressed it on and I'm gonna mark those slight indentations Okay. That looks like a good job there. The piece that I cut out the metal, I covered the hole here because the fan will be blowing in this general vicinity. And uh, being that it will be doing so, I don't want it to actually cool the bottom of that PCB. So that just adds on to the insulation properties um, now at this point uh, the only thing left to do actually there's two things that are left to do I must fix the Bowden tube and I have to replace the Bowden tube as well as uh, put a fan in the sprinter so without further ado I'm gonna bid you goodbye um, I have uh, decided to put affiliate links to most of the stuff that I've used and bought here um, they're all Amazon links they'll be in the description and on the next part of the series and this is only a two-part series uh, I will be installing the fan turning down the bushing for the Bowden tube and installing a new Bowden tube as well as printing some parts for this very machine using this machine alrighty then later